guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the scrapped, unused, and unseen content in gaming. Most golf games out there have never really been my cup of tea. Look at that. That looks good. That might be in the hole. Exceptions to this are, of course, Wii Sports Golf and the Mario Golf series. I mean, come on. These games had Plum, Joe, Grace, and Gene Yus. Anyways, in this video, I'll be diving into both the Game Boy Color and Nintendo 64 version of this installment of Mario's Golfing Adventures. With all that said, go grab your three wood. It's time to tee up for some lost bits. Alright, let's kick things off with the Game Boy Color version. There's only a few things to mention with this version, but thankfully most of them are pretty slick. Starting off, there's a string of unused text in the non-Japanese versions of the game. In broken English, it reads, This buffer is for notes you don't want to save, and for lisp evaluation, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's hard to really pinpoint what this means, but I can only assume something was lost in translation here, and it was mostly just a test string, judging by the letters at the end. Next up are a few debugging features left over in the game. The first is a debug display that annoyingly flickers on screen. If we pause it and have a look, there are a lot of values here. Unfortunately, I'm unsure as to what any of them refer to, though. This game also has a pretty robust debug menu that can only be accessed in the RPG story mode of the game. Yeah, some of the early handheld Mario sports games actually had a single player RPG mode, complete with NPCs, different areas, and more. Really wish these would make a comeback someday. Anyways, this debug mode allows us to do quite a bit. First on the list is a scene selection option, and as the name suggests, this allows us to warp to basically any area in the game, from Peach's Castle to any of the practice areas. The enter number selection at the bottom of the text box doesn't seem to do anything though. In a similar manner, the map option here allows us to change the background graphic of the current area to a list of others. All the present characters remain, but the area collision changes to the new area. It's pretty cool, you can walk on many of the golf courses from the bird's eye view, and even walk around on the background from the intro character select part. I was also able to load into what's apparently known as the projector room, or tear-op, I suppose? And here we can walk around in what looks to be the graphics for what I believe is the invitation to Peach's castle. It's pretty cool to see these graphics are found in a room like this, and that we can still walk around in it. Next up is the palette option, and this of course lets us play around with the color palette of the currently occupied area. Green and blue lizard skinned NPCs? You got it! Lastly in this debug menu is a flag option. This editor lets you enable and disable certain flags for debugging. There are so many different combinations that could be possible with this, so obviously I won't have time to test them all here, so I don't know the exact extent of what this can do. I was however able to make all the character sprites disappear, and also disable collision detection which allowed me to roam freely around the game, which was pretty neat. There wasn't much that's unseen outside of normal view, since generally the areas are super small. However, one thing I did find was a normally unseen 1-up mushroom outside of Peach's castle. And the last notable normally inaccessible thing in this game is a hidden test room used by the developers. This room can be accessed from the scene selector from the debug menu, and in it we are greeted to two columns of all the Mario characters in the game. Each of these characters has a different debugging feature, so let's go through all of them quickly, starting with the top left. Talking to the left Mario will take you to an animation test menu, which allows us to view the animations for each character seen after each hole. Holden ones are pretty hard to get, so this is a much easier method for those who just want to see the animations. Also, Wario twirling like a ballerina. Nuff said. Next is left Luigi, who takes us to a weird area that starts with a result screen, but you can also move around here to see other various graphics. There's quite a lot of stuff here, and it's kind of an eyesore. It's pretty apparent that this area was probably just for testing how these graphics would appear in the game. The rest of the characters in the left column teleport the player to another area in the game. 
Yoshi teleports the player to the male locker room, Toad to the front of the clubhouse, Peach to the lounge, Wario to the trophy room, of course, and DK takes the player to the Caddy Master's office outside area. Since the developers could warp to many areas using the debug menu, it seems that these functions are pretty redundant. Unless, of course, this room predated the debug menu. Now moving on to the right column, this Mario takes us to a blank scored versus result screen. Moving on from this screen then takes us again to the animation test from earlier, only this time the dialog boxes use a different color palette. Luigi here just crashed the game for me every time, but apparently he's supposed to change the debug overlay or something. Yoshi shows how many stars are needed for Toad Highlands. Toad reveals a tournament total screen. Peach shows rankings for tournament mode. Wario will pause the game and enable a sepia effect, which is then followed by several beeps. Pretty weird. And finally, DK here on the bottom right will actually take us to another debug room. Here interacting with either Mario or Wario will cycle the character sprites between all the game's characters and even some other sprites like the golf ball or several other effects. When applicable, interacting with Peach and Toad will test the swinging animation for the currently selected character. And that's basically all there is for the Game Boy Color version. It always amazes me just how much these Game Boy games have in terms of debugging content. Okay, and now let's move on to the Nintendo 64, the version that I think most people will remember. It's -a -me. Yeah, Mario, that's a you. Although this game has arguably less features, at the time it obviously boasted better graphics and a much simpler to set up multiplayer experience. It also used character model designs that looked very... unique. Some pretty different than other Mario games of the era. Anyway, starting things off here, there are a few unused audio tracks, at least in the North American and Japanese regional versions. Australian and European viewers may recognize this track as the opening theme for the game, but it goes unheard in other regions. Let's have a quick listen. Next, although not unused, there's a secret track that some of you may not know about. It can be heard by playing a 4 player game and having each character selected as either Yoshi or Donkey Kong and playing any mode except for the mini golf one. I quite like this song, it's really relaxing and mellow. Next are two supposedly unused hidden intro results tracks. I scoured the internet but couldn't find any information on how to find or access these in the game, so unless there's evidence to the contrary, I'll deem them unused. These songs are listed in the game's soundtrack as hidden intro results 1 and 2. The first song is a really groovy remix of the classic Super Mario Bros. theme. And the second version is again another boppin' tune. This version of Mario Golf also has a ground type that goes unused. It's called the Cartway, and just as it appears grey in color, it looks to be an asphalt type of terrain. Its attributes include low friction and a high coefficient of restitution. That's just my fancy engineer way of saying, golf ball bounces well. Why would there be asphalt in a Mario golfing game is a good question, and why is it left over is an even better one. Maybe there were supposed to be courses based in parking lots or around roads or something. Who knows? So I tried moving the camera around in this game, but unfortunately this game suffers from the same fate as we saw in the Mario Party episodes where moving the camera causes the models to all warp. And this quite frankly makes it really tough to see anything outside of normal view in a presentable manner. 
That said, it was cool to see how the game's camera normally operates. When in the default camera angle, everything is locked in, so to speak, and really only the character, the flag in the top left, as well as the actual flag way in the distance are free. But when switching to the Lakitu camera mode, we can actually freely move around the hole. A very weird phenomenon, I've never seen anything like this happen before, as usually everything moves when I move the camera. As you can see, the top section of the view gets pretty funky as well. Like I said earlier though, unfortunately there isn't really anything normally unseen outside of the player's regular view. So with that, let's swing to the final segment, more debugging goodness. By entering in the following GameShark code in the North American version of the game, the debug mode can be accessed. Right away on the intro cutscene, some debugging text can be seen, like which camera is currently in use. We can also see a countdown to when the camera changes, as well as a timer for the time elapsed in the cutscene. With a second controller plugged in, a usage meter can be seen, in addition to several more debugging numbers, which toggle when several actions or inputs are made, or effects are loaded. By pressing L, the game can be frozen, and then advanced frame by frame by pressing left on the D-pad. Doesn't seem all too practical for fun uses, but I can see how this could be useful for actual debugging. But this stuff all pales in comparison to what else the debug mode can do during an actual golf game. By pressing L and start during the game, a static RAM editor can be accessed and toyed around just like we saw with the Game Boy Color version. The build date of the game can also be seen here. There are quite a few things that can be done when playing around with these values, so let's pop through some of them. You can have the current as well as projected landing point coordinates displayed. You can disable rendering of the ground and the player. Render land only far away from the player. Disable the heads up display. Disable the skybox. Spawn in rings even if you aren't playing ring mode display some more debugging values, and even allow an AI to take over controlling your character. I mean, no, this is totally me playing. It seems almost faster too, and it also displays a target minus two on the screen. I assume this was the goal when testing the AI to see if it could get a birdie in each course. Sometimes the ball also moves before the model can even complete its swinging animation, which is pretty strange. Moving along, you can also display a basic text string that can be color swapped and moved around with a second controller, get a close-up view of the ball and the player's golf club, and then display several messages on screen like hole-in-one, par, birdie, and the like. There's also a color and fog editor. Just as you'd expect, with this you can toggle the thickness of the fog, as well as play around with the color of the background and sky. There we go, much better. Now this is what I call an immersive golf experience. Next up, you can enable the game to show the current X, Y, and Z coordinates, as well as the attribute value of the current ground type the ball is on. As an added bonus, if you enable this in the mini golf mode and hit the ball off one of the walls, hit, get height info, and check Y axis text strings will also sometimes appear on screen. Not very exciting, but still kinda cool, I guess. And lastly, there is a feature that allows you to listen to the currently selected character's sounds mixed with some other characters, basically resulting in a very subpar sound test. Now, there are quite a few more things that can be enabled or disabled, but most of them just result in either more coordinates or debugging text being displayed, or it just straight up crashes the game. As you saw, Mario Golf 64 has quite a few debugging features, only frankly, this time around, it's definitely more quantity than quality. Personally, I'd take scene teleporting and developer test rooms over displaying debug numbers any day. But anyways guys, that's it for this Lost Bits video and I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you did, a like on the video is much appreciated. If you enjoyed and want to check out some more Lost Bits videos, you can do so by clicking on the card right here. 
And if you would like to support the channel, check out my merch at tetrabaygaming.com. Got some shirts, hoodies, and more you might fancy, or consider becoming the latest channel member by clicking the join button below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.